welcome to episode 35 of the Woodwind Doubling Channel. Today we're going to talk about clarinet side keys. I think most people underuse these and a lot of people don't even really understand the functions of a lot of them. So we're going to go through and uh, maybe touch on some obvious things for some people. But if you're uh, new to the clarinet or you're a doubler whose major instrument is one of the other woodwinds and you need to improve your clarinet skills, certainly you should be able to pick up something from this. And the, uh, you might even find out a few little tricks you hadn't thought of before in terms of uh, trill fingerings, alternate fingerings, things like that. All right, start with the easiest things first. Obviously, this here, the uh, first side key on the bottom, that's the uh, D sharp or E flat key. And uh, that should be the default fingering for uh, E flat in the low register. And B flat in the upper register. Now, I've actually seen people who kind of uh, glommed onto the idea of using the sliver key here. It's great in some running passages, but there's some obvious problems with it right away. If you have to go from an E flat to a C, that's a disastrous move, never gonna work. So this as a default fingering, much better. Now, there are a few alternate fingerings, say for the B flat in the upper register that work. Uh, the one on one fingering is one that certainly does, uh, but that doesn't work for the E flat in the low register tends to be quite sharp. We've talked about some of the uh, alternate things there and also using uh, some other uh, pieces of key work to help fix those problems. Next one we come to is the uh, F sharp or G flat, uh, which can also be used in the upper register as an alternate C sharp or D flat. Now this is one that I find a lot of people uh, have shied away from. On the clarinet, the way that the uh, side keys are arranged, you can see that it's a group of four keys and two of them are kind of the same level and the other two are kind of the same level which means that you can operate the lower one or both. And when we use this key here, we actually use both keys at the same time. So to play an F sharp properly, so certainly if we want to trill F to G flat or uh, F to F sharp, uh, E sharp to F sharp, but a lot of chromatic passages just work, work a lot better like that since we're not having to alternate between doing our uh, thumb to our index finger like this all the time. That back and forth mechanism uh, really doesn't help stabilize the instrument at all. So that's one I see being uh, vastly underused. Um, now, you may find on some contrabass clarinets uh, uh, that they don't necessarily have the full implementation of those keys. So that can be a problem on some of the larger instruments, but you know, generally you're not gonna be writing trills for that. It's nice to have all the facility if you can, but just be aware of that if you end up playing a, a contrabass clarinet at some point. But for B flat and bass clarinet uh, and E flat clarinet, the, the ones you mostly that are bread and butter horns, you're gonna be using those, you should be using those fingerings much more than most people do. Now there is one other handy thing, and, and it might not come up often, but it's, it's very helpful. Uh, it's very difficult to do uh, an F sharp to G sharp or G flat to A flat trill on the clarinet. It would be awkward. You can do it slowly, but it's not really fluid. However, if you use the side key, I realize that it's a bit flat, but it is a trill fingering and it's a much more fluid way of doing it. So you, if you have to do an actual trill there, you can certainly get away with that one. Now on the upper register, uh, hardly anybody uses it for C sharp or for C to D sharp or D flat. Can get you out of a few little messes there because this is actually changing over to the altissimo register. There's a bit of a break there as well as at the middle of the instrument. Now, one of the next things up on the uh, side key list is the second from top side key. This is one of my personal favorites because uh, I've used it quite a lot as a resonance key for B flat. If you look at the location of the tone hole for this key, it's right about where the B flat tone hole should be. But on the clarinet, on B flat clarinets at least, we use the register key as our B flat tone hole. This presents some problems in terms of uh, you know, sound quality and intonation a lot of cases. It, it has a reputation for being the airiest sounding note on a B flat clarinet. And uh, 
there are various compensating uh, fingerings that people have used, covered fingerings that introduce some resonance there, and they, they certainly have their place. And I usually use some kind of a resonance fingering uh, almost as a matter of course with the A and B flat in the middle of just about any uh, B flat clarinet. And in addition to that, it's gonna help you cross the break by having more fingers down already. But if you want a really superbly clear B flat playing A with this second from top side key in sustained passages is a way of really potentially clearing up that note. And again, you can use it uh, in addition to the resonance keys and get a really, really good sounding B flat. Now, caution there, you can have some intonation changes and things like that that might need to be addressed. But again, it gives you a, a choice of uh, slightly varying tunings in the same note, which can help if you're trying to blend uh, tuning with someone else. A well, standard B flat on here, no extra help. Now, I usually put down some extra fingers. And that's a substantial improvement in the resonance. Now, if I play with just the second from top side key and the A key, no resonance fingering. That's at least the measure of the resonance fingering version. And then if we put everything in the mix, That gives us about the most solid, clear B flat you'd probably get out of the middle of the instrument. So then again, if you're playing sustained passages where you really need some clarity on that note, rather than going a lot clearer. So I, I try to cram that in wherever I can, if, if it makes musical sense and also if it makes technical sense at that point. Now, the other thing we can do with that key is I think it's a better way of trilling A to B flat Anytime we're trilling the thumb, it kind of unsteadies the instrument. Plus, we can use the resonance fingerings for the A and keep it down for that B flat. All of a sudden, we've got a really clear A to B flat trill. We can do another handy thing with these keys if we trill A to the top. We get an actually good A to B trill. Uh, if we want to trill uh, A sharp to B, we can do that. It's not as clean, but it's a lot easier than going over the break. And then uh, one of my favorite ones, because you do run into this more than you might expect, and that's the B flat to C trill. And that one is actually both top side keys with a B flat. Works either way with or without the resonance fingerings. Again, intonation is not perfect, but try trilling. That one actually makes musical sense to use it that way. Now, you can also use a lot of these fingerings in the upper register, not so much with the throat tone fingerings, but these keys actually are useful up top as well. Uh, one of the trills that I see most frequently done in what I would consider an incorrect way is uh, high C to D. Now, it ends up being a kind of lazy thing. I, I kind of wonder if sometimes that uh, saxophonists uh, kind of came up with this fingering. If you play a high C and you trill the side G sharp key, you get something like a C to D trill. It's not really in tune though. And to a saxophonist, that would be where their palm D key is. It kind of makes sense from that point. It's not very good. A better one is to use the second from top right hand side key. There's considerable difference in tuning that way. Using the G sharp key as a trill key, very flat. Using that second top side key, a much better solution. Now, there's probably some other ways of using side keys that I haven't thought of. I've seen people come up with some uh, really crazy variations on using them for special purpose trills and tremolos and things like that. We really, we've touched on half step and whole step trills, but not really any tremolo fingerings. Uh, so if you have any additional fingerings like that, uh, you know, please uh, leave a note in the comments and I'd love to try out some of those things. I'm always game for a new fingering to experiment with to uh, make te technical passages better and to improve intonation and just to have some fun sometimes. Right, that's it for episode number 35 on uh, the clarinet side keys and some trill fingerings. Uh, thanks again for watching the Woodwind Doubling channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking the link below and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.